Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Sri, I'm a primary care sports medicine doctor practicing in the United States. In this video, I'm going to walk through my journey on how I became a sports medicine doctor in the United States. Let's get started. So I'm currently in Lexington, Kentucky, getting ready to board my flight to West Palm Beach, Florida for a regenerative medicine conference. As I was recording this video, it became time to board my flight to Atlanta, where I have a one hour layover. I'll see you guys in Atlanta. So I completed a medical school from PhD IMSR in Coimbatore. So during the last year, which is basically the house officer training, this is a mandatory training if you do medical school in India. And that's when I started thinking about sports medicine. So let me rewind a little bit. The sports medicine interest stems from me uh, playing basketball. I represent a high school and also represent a medical school. In no means that I was a great basketball player, but still I enjoyed playing basketball. Uh, not to boast about it, but we do have a, a pretty good team in both in high school and also in our medical school. But anyways, I would get these multiple ankle injuries, basically like ankle sprains. And after that, I would not get any proper guidance for return to play or rehab or anything of that sort. The only treatment that I used to get is like casting my ankle for four to six weeks and then they would let me go to play. And as you know, that that um, like casting the ankle causes more stiffness and it causes more pain. And eventually that's when I started reading more about sports articles and sports injuries and stuff like that, which is where I actually uh, developed an interest in sports medicine. So in addition, I was also interested in diabetes management, obesity management, exercise prescription, exercise physiology. I would read a lot of men's health articles and I would be really interested in those articles where they talk about exercise prescription and the treatment of common lifestyle diseases. So my initial plan was to do internal medicine and then do endocrinology and then do sports medicine. So basically like two fellowships. I know guys, I in, in, during the initial phases, I always set these unrealistic goals. So basically, uh, I just realized that I'm not getting any proper guidance on how to go about uh, pursuing primary care sports medicine. I would talk to these orthopedic physicians who would actually convince me to do orthopedics. Uh, there was one doctor, his name was Kanan Pogarendi. He actually had done masters in sports medicine after he completed his medical graduation and he was pretty much practicing like a primary care sports medicine doctor. So he told me to go abroad. So my plan was to either go to Australia or USA, but then finally I decided that I want to go to USA. So initially I didn't know where to start. Obviously, if I just go say that I'm interested in sports medicine, nobody's going to give me an opportunity. So I wanted to uh, figure out to get some exposure in the field of sports medicine. So at that time I was having a lot of interest and passion in exercise physiology. So I decided to pursue a master's in exercise physiology. So my brother has an engineering background, so he helped me pass the GRE and the TOEFL exam. And after that, I applied to Masters in Exercise Physiology in USA. Uh, I was really interested in going to University of Kentucky because of the Barnstable Diabetes and Obesity Center. So I contacted one of the faculty at the mas uh, in the Masters in Exercise Physiology program. His name was Dr. Fleener. And I, I kind of demonstrated my interest in his research. So he was doing a research on exercise and its effect on arterial stiffness. So he, write, he liked my profile and then I got into Masters in Exercise Physiology at the University of Kentucky. So that's it guys, I came to USA to pursue Masters in Exercise Physiology. And I'll continue the rest of the story tomorrow. Currently at the West Palm Beach, Florida, at the Regenerative Medicine Training Institute, the conference is going to start in the next few minutes. Um, today I'm really excited to learn about all about autobiologics and stuff. So anyway, let me start getting, uh, let me continue with my journey. So uh, when I came to University of Kentucky for my Masters, for the first six months, I was focused on uh, getting my step one done. So I got my step one done. And then I got a job at the Johnson Recreation Center, which is kind of a gym facility. And I was basically more like a supervisor where I would be making sure that everybody's exercising safely, not as a personal trainer though, just to make sure that everybody knows how to use equipment, cleaning the equipment and so forth. So I was getting around like $10 per hour at that time. So at the same time, I was emailing a lot of doctors to get an observership experience. So I was emailing uh, predominantly internal medicine doctors or specialists such as endocrinology, uh, cardiology, even though my focus was to shadow an endocrinologist uh, physician. Uh, but anyway, it was, it was really scary because I mean, I'm doing masters. The masters also was really hard because I'm completely learning a new field. Uh, and at the same time, uh, trying to email doctors, trying to get absorption experience and trying to coordinate time. So it was hard. But after around like six months, I get my first email back from a physician providing me an opportunity to observe him. And that, that was an endocrinologist. So initially, the experience was amazing. You know, I'm sharing this 
uh, endocrinologist who's managing like type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, hypothyroidism, parathyroidism, all those things, things were great. But after like a couple of months, it started to get a little bit boring. I wanted to have a more like a diverse uh, set of like a practice. Uh, and I also wanted to do sports medicine and end. So I didn't see those dots connecting. So anytime when the patient would talk about like, I've got this shoulder pain going on, I've got this knee pain going on, or I need some help with so and so, uh, other than endocrinologist, the endocrinologist will say that you have to see a primary care doctor. So that's when I started to become more curious about what this primary care uh, specialty is all about. And that's when the interest in family medicine began. So then I go home and I'm emailing a lot of family medicine doctors at the University of Kentucky. And then Dr. Oscar Perez, he emailed me back. And that was a life-changing opportunity for me. He was, he was a doctor who really kindled my passion towards family medicine. I was so grateful to have him as a mentor, okay? I think I have to go to the conference now. I'll see you in the evening, okay? Bye-bye. So I just finished my regenerative medicine conference and I'm going on a walk at Du Bois Park at West Palm Beach, Florida. But anyway, it was a really great day. So let me continue. So uh, where did I stop? Yeah, Dr. Oscar Perez. So Dr. Oscar Perez was a great mentor. So he was an osteopathic physician and he would see a lot of musculoskeletal complaints in addition to his bread and butter family medicine. He was good in his procedural skills and he really served as a great mentor. I cannot say anything more than that. It was, I, I, think, I think it was because of him I got into family medicine. And then I also shadowed Dr. Mitchell, who was a chief resident at that time. Uh, he was actually applying for fellowship in sports medicine, so he also would guide me and he also served as a really great mentor. So anyway, uh, I got matched into the University of Kentucky. Uh, for those of you interested in my step scores, my step one was 228, my step two was 241, but this was back in 2015. So things are a little bit more competitive now in terms of score for family medicine. So during residency, I got a different mentor. So his name was Dr. Rankin. He was a family medicine and a sports medicine trained. The good thing about him is that he really challenges me. If, if I did good, he'll say that I did good. If I didn't meet his expectation, he'll say I didn't meet his expectation. He was really honest and that really challenged me to push my limits. So I had an amazing uh, three years during my residency. And then I did an academic medicine fellowship, but I did like 50% clinical, 50% research. And then I got into fellowship at the University of Kentucky. Our fellowship year was pretty hard and we got a lot of learning. Um, we used to cover University of Kentucky games. We, I, had, I personally had to cover Kentucky State University athletics. We got a ton of training in musculoskeletal ultrasound. We saw a ton of patients and it was a really good one year. And then after I graduate, I joined the uh, Department of Family Medicine at the University of Kentucky, and I have a joint department with the Department of Orthopedics too. So now I serve as the uh, Medical Director for the Exercise Physiology, Medical Director for the Joshon College. Uh, I work as a hospitalist a little bit, uh, but I serve predominantly uh, in the outpatient clinic. So it's a ton of fun, and, and, and then the, the reason it's fun is because I have an amazing staff, both at Joshon College and also in my clinic. And my nurse Pam, even even when the day is like real hectic, I'm able to survive because of her. So, ton of fun. Um, so I'm going to give my final advice for medical students and residents who are considering sports medicine. I would say follow your passion, be ready to put the hard work. The, the help is going to come along the way, but majority of the work should come from you. Okay, I'll see you then. Bye bye.